everybody from who comes to these seminars is essentially doing the same job in their community. This is a recipe for a community if they really want to embrace social change. When you feel their care, you feel, I feel their love. If we each did our own work now, I wonder, what if? Which way, people? The story of youth engagement is told in many contexts. The civil rights, anti-war, immigrant rights, and indigenous language movements are rich with examples of young people who were crucial in creating change. To build on the lessons of the past and the strategies of the present in order to strengthen future movements, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation brought together youth activists and leaders from across time and culture, representing many communities for a seminar to learn from one another and share ideas, passion, and inspiration to create change. We've got 14 of our grantee communities that are working on um, and getting young people involved in social change in their communities. And we are just thrilled to, first of all, experience the quality of what um, has shown up here, but not only in who's here, but what they're bringing, the level of depth, the level of insights, the level of personal sharing that's happened. Over three days, this event, a celebration of youth engagement across time and culture, celebrated the rhythm of the past, the relationships of the present, and the results of the future, connecting the ideas, inspiration, and experience of adults who were engaged in social change as young people with the energy, enthusiasm, and action of youth leaders today to create a plan of action for the future. And we did that because we had done a lot of funding around youth engagement and we really wanted to honor the concepts of time, meaning age and generational differences around youth engagement. The idea of being able to draw a generation together from all parts of the United States working on Kellogg funded programs and activities who have some common understandings, particularly with respect to multiculturalism and the ability to be able to work across boundaries. I like to say that this has been very inspiring for me as well to hear the voices of our future. And I just say, continue to let your voices be heard. You are the fire. And as the board chair said, hello and goodbye. I love what I do, and I feel like once you work in this kind of field, you just realize that you're getting as much out of it as that you're putting in, and so it makes you want to continue down this path of empowering others and empowering yourself. A lot of the work that we've done even yesterday was really powerful to me of looking at root causes rather than just looking at the symptom. Rhythm is a pattern or flow of recurring elements that create the backbone of music, of activities, of progress. In any successful social movement, as in any good music, there is a strong rhythm. It is a spark, the flow, the synergy that brings together the right people in the right place at the right time to create powerful results. Through an understanding of the successes of youth engagement over time, through the stories of elders who have dedicated their lives to creating change, we begin to recognize, define, and appreciate the rhythm that has shaped the past as a framework for building towards the future. The next day, there was no space in the county jail, no space in the city jail, no space in the juvenile hall. So they put them at the fairground because there was nowhere else to put them. 
They were just that committed. They were climbing over walls. You're talking about making an impact on children's lives and mentoring. I became very angry when I found the injustice that was going on all around me and had gone on for 500 years since Columbus came here. <laughs> and I just kind of let it out. People called me militant. So now I had a tag, a name, but I never felt like a militant person, and to this day I still don't. But once in a while, if that's what they want to call me and it gets me someplace, I'll let them do it. <laughs> we were committed to a cause. There was an idea, an issue, something that was so important to us that we were willing to do that. So that cause was important. But it's not enough to just have a cause. There was also sort of a, a collective relationship and, and about it because it wasn't just one person. It was all of us working towards that common goal, that cause. The importance of individuals in, in the movement is powerful and I think especially as social change agents as we sit in this room and we go back out into the larger room if we can learn something from each one of us and take that back to our own communities it'll be that much more powerful. I could relate to the elder um, generation because one thing is in order to be effective you need to you, you have to be respected you know when you communicate when you communicate with your elders. My strategy and my lesson that I can feel because I also came from that era of struggle is that you're more powerful than you think you are and sometimes one little thing that you do will just you may think you were not successful and then went on to the next thing but that may have triggered somebody else if it were not for leaders like Adrienne and other people from our era, we wouldn't have a lot of the things we have today. I find it exceptionally beneficial when I'm able to talk with a like-minded adult who can give me advice, who can give me guidance, who have been in the same situation that I am in now trying to create the social change within my community and change the way that my community views me as a young person. Relationships define much of who we are, where we live, who we meet, and with whom we work, learn, and grow. Each individual, each community, and each organization, through their relationships with one another, bring unique gifts. Sharing and appreciating these relationships helps us understand the unique gifts and strategies we bring to our work. Our diversity ranges from anywhere from religion to political views to as things as obvious as race, all that kind of stuff, and I think that's really what makes our work special. It's that when things aren't comfortable, you don't tend to, you don't tend to express yourself or express your feelings as well as you should, or at all, as a matter of fact. So I hope, Hillary, that I bring <laughs> so much uh, comfortable energy for you. You have to be resilient to keep moving forward because that can be discouraging to the point that you just want to throw your hands up and give up. And I think once you do that, um, you know, it's really all for nothing. So just to have that, that sense of resiliency, the, you know, the ability to bounce back from adversity, but stronger than before, um, I think it is a lesson that we should all take with us. It doesn't us. matter if you know what you're about to step into. It's that passion is going to always guide you in the right direction. And I, I think it's interesting because I think if somebody had asked you what you were going to do, with your life, you never would have said everything that you've done. Mm -hmm. But it was the fact that you were willing and you were completely open that like, it's like things just kept presenting themselves and you just ran with it. And I, and I think that that's something that I like to remind myself of too, to just be really open and to be willing to take those risks and follow your heart. And the more, I guess, Kellogg stuff that we do, the more that I feel that I'm able to speak out, able to talk about who I am, what I do, and what I guess my ambitions are, and just different stuff like that, and what I want to do in the communities. And I think that's one thing that I'm continuing to develop. And the more I come to these meetings, the more, the stronger I feel that I have a voice and that it's heard and that it has some value. Passion for what they do. And I think that's what connects all of us and what makes us want to do what we do and makes us committed and um, determined to pull through in what we're doing. There's no such thing as leftovers, because when we leave the table, it's all over. They call for supper once, not twice. I sure do love my beans and rice. Colonel Sanders don't know nothing about finger licking. 
until he had some my grandmother's mother gave me chicken. <laughs> I wanted to join the service, so I went to the Navy. I had to drop out because they didn't know how to fix biscuits and gravy. <laughs> right now, your stomach might begin to turn and hurt. I've got to go to this peach cobbler for dessert. Mm -hmm. To wash it all down, I'll get what my mama made. A big old tall glass of sweet lemonade. They gave you everything that it takes. Pasties, fake nails, hair weaves, stilettos, bikini wax, double tape, extra cushion, chiro chiropractic, liposuction, facelift, tummy tuck, padded panties, smile mammy, Botox, Prozac, antidepressants, 90 dollar workout sessions, and finally, you got a woman marketable enough to smack her assets onto a double disc exploitation compilation. Congratulations, you're a successful, respectable artist now. Got your sweat dripping all over your body, forming tiny puddles at the base of your ankles with the residue of your dignity rippling southern bass melodies with subliminal subble for sounds but they tell you yo so sexy now i want to thank you for giving us this chance to get together and realize that we have all these other people who we share a lot of core values with and that's what we found that we care about the world outside of ourselves and so many people assume that young people don't have that within them. there's a lot of love in that space you know there's just a lot of love you you just know they care you feel their care. That's the critical part of that relationship between elders and youth is, you know, it's, we, I need my elders because I need they to be really healed. We need the stability of you're loved and I'm here for you and if you're hurting I've got some medicine. It may not be a pill, right? but I do have some medicine for you, you know. I have some way of comforting you and helping you. The valuable thing is the connections I made with all the different groups. Now I have emails and numbers and brochures of so many different amazing organizations doing similar work as I. So I feel that's extremely valuable. I'm hoping that in 25 years, when you guys are doing the 100th celebration, <laughs> that uh, all of us are the adults then who we can be invited back to share these experiences again. So hopefully we can keep in touch because this is a great community that we've built just over the last three days. So thank you. By building on the lessons of the past and reflecting on the gifts, talents, strategies, and ideas that we all bring to the table as young people, adults, and elders from our work in diverse communities with diverse challenges, we discover the passion and spirit that unites and propels us toward greater community impact. The importance of individuals in, in the movement is powerful. And I think, especially as social change agents, as we sit in this room and we go back out into the larger room, if we can learn something from each one of us and take that back to our own communities, it'll be that much more powerful. The call to action that they're coming up with is just powerful. Someone came to me and said, this is a recipe for a community if they really want to embrace social change involving young people and elders. Never let the instrumental you've been given limit you shape and mold the moment from the music that you're living to. We bring it to you now, strike a chord, making music to the movement of a moment like this. Smiling in my 
But I can't stay like this for long I won't drown in my rain Drops I try